Hello. Okay. That sounds correct. Uh, we're going to get started. So, hello everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Ash. I'll be starting us off. And as you can see, I need a new picture on this slide. Uh, I've had a bit of a haircut since then. Um, welcome to Cert Manager in five levels of difficulty. Uh, today, we're going to be taking you through Cert Manager in five levels of difficulty. You've got me, you've got Mile here, and Tim. We're all at Venify. We're all Cert Manager maintainers, uh, which is good because of the content matter. Um, <laughs> to start us off, uh, we've got the typical slide where we show you a load of numbers. Um, we like all of these numbers. One of my favorite numbers on this is 1 million plus daily downloads. Uh, the problem with that number is we don't actually know if it's true. Well, we know it's not true, actually. We know it's bigger than that. We don't know how big because um, our container images are hosted on key.io or Quay. I don't know how you're meant to pronounce it. Um, and every time we try and look at the analytics, we actually crash the analytics page. We get a 500 error. So if anyone is from Red Hat and can tell us how many downloads we have, we'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, I think we're the second biggest project. We don't, we'd love to know. Um, the other important thing on this slide, obviously, is that we're a CNCF incubating project. That's why we're here today. That's why you're here today, I assume, at least in part. Um, we're really hoping at the moment that we're going to be hitting graduated status soon. Obviously, that's the same level that Kubernetes itself is at. It'll be awesome to get there. We're really hoping we'll get there before KubeCon in Paris next year. Um, but yeah, the security audit for that is currently ongoing, which is awesome. And uh, watch this space. Hope hopefully, uh, the next time we're giving a talk, we'll be a graduated project. So here are the five levels of difficulty that we're going to be talking about. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of audience interaction, not much. If you think you're at one of these levels, uh, just raise your hand and then put your hand down if uh, you no longer understand what we're talking about. So if you've used Cert Manager at all, um, you've probably done something like ingress and gateway annotations. If you've ever issued a certificate using Cert Manager, put your hand up. Lots of hands. That's great. Uh, have you used a certificate resource? Yeah. Private PKI, anyone doing private PKI, and you, especially if you're using Trust Manager? Few, <laughs> yeah, a few hands there. Um, CSI drivers, approver policy? Okay, a lot less hands, yeah. This is the real stuff, this is the meat of the talk now. And level five, has anyone written a custom issuer or a plugin? Oh, <laughs> well, there is a hand up at the back. That's, that's awesome, awesome. Um, We'll get to all that stuff. First, we need to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, this is the bit we do at every Cert Manager talk where we talk a little bit about what TLS is, how certificates work. So everyone's you know, starting from the same bit. I, the idea is you have um, some application, like you're a bank, uh, and you need a certificate to prove that you own a domain. So a customer, a client connects to your service, and you hand them a certificate that says, yeah, I am this bank, and I, this is the proof. Um, if everything goes wrong, then the client will see a your connection is not private thing and they probably won't do banking with you. Um, if everything goes right, hopefully they see this and it will all be working. Uh, this means that you had, well, the client had some way of trusting your certificate before they actually got it. Um, they have a trust store on their device, which is what's on this laptop, on my phone, on your phone, uh, and they using a chain of certificates, a chain of cryptographic signatures, if you want to be technical and fancy, um, your client device was able to verify that the certificate was actually uh, issued to the bank, and you trust that because you trust the root CA, we say, um, or a certificate authority. Essentially, you want to get certificates for your services in Kubernetes, and Cert Manager helps you do that. Um, another thing that's worth pointing out is that this isn't just one way so um, we talked about a, client, uh, a bank that is running a server that gives you a certificate. They can also then say, hey, and you can give me a certificate and you can send back yours. So a manager can do that as well. And we'll learn a bit more about that as we go further on in the talk. But that's enough from me. You've heard enough from me. So I will pass over the mic to Tim. Thanks a lot. All right. So at level one, we will actually look at the simplest way to use Cert Manager. And for that, we will look at the main cert manager use case. That's namely um, provisioning a certificate for your application. So basically what we're doing, we allow your application to request a certificate through cert manager. Then your certificate authority will respond with a certificate. 
and that will be provisioned by cert manager in a location that is accessible by the application. So the simplest way to do this, to do this flow, is by doing this for ingress resources. So in this example, I have an ingress resource, and we are serving example.com slash bar here. So if you go to that URL, we see that we are serving this um, service here that returns the current time. But you might have also noticed that this is served over a non-secure connection. So if we try to go to the secure variant of this, of this DNS um, name, of this endpoint, we actually get an error. So this is the thing that Ash explained. We get an error saying that this connection is not private. And this is because by default, Ingress will actually use like a self-signed certificate. And we haven't actually configured a proper certificate for this endpoint. But thanks to cert manager, it's very easy to do this. So what we will do, we'll do is we will add it to the Ingress resource. We will add an annotation that points to a cert, a cert manager issuer. So in this case, the Let's Encrypt production issuer. And Cert Manager will detect that this ingress exists, that it has the SN annotation. So it will know, OK, for this ingress, I have to do something. Additionally, we will add a TLS section in the ingress resource. And this TLS section uh, specifies where it has to find its, um, its secret that contains the TLS certificate and the private key material. So normally, what you would do is you would configure this, and then you create the secret that contains this information. However, in this case, of course, the secret doesn't exist because we haven't created it. Um, but the great thing here is because we added the annotation, Cert Manager will automatically generate the secret for you. So after we configure this, we apply this ingress, and we refresh the website. We see that the um, endpoint is now served over a secure connection. So this is the, actually the easiest way to use Cert Manager. Um, kind of a summary of this is you basically annotate your ingress. Behind the, the screen or behind the scenes, what's happening is actually that Cert Manager will detect the annotation. It will create a certificate resource, a certificate resource that points to the secrets that we specified in the TLS section. That certificate resource then in itself will be uh, reconciled by cert manager. Certificate request resources will be created, and those certificate request resources will be detected by the issuer, which then returns the signed certificate, which is then placed in the certificate together with the private key, and so that it can be used and picked up by the ingress controller. So now Miles will talk more about the uh, secret resource, no, the certificate resource, sorry. Thank you, Tim. So we have seen that the ingress resource in itself, if you add one annotation, you will get a Let's Encrypt certificate for free. But sometimes you cannot do that. Uh, sometimes the ingress annotation system won't let you do all the customization you want. And this is going to be level two. Uh, level two is creating your own certificate request. And to give you an example of what I mean by customizing your X509 certificates, I'll be using a client certificate, client certificate, uh, client certificate example. Redis, Redis, the Redis server, uh, if you install it with Helm, it will require you to give a secret. And the secret, it is expected to be a server certificate. And on the, on the other hand, on the other hand, uh, I, I chose to go with a Spring Boot application that connects to this Redis database uh, because it's a Java application which has a, a tiny quirk to it. And in this, in this configuration, we will have two certificates, one uh, Redis server cert, and cert manager will create a secret for it and that's the secret that will be load, uh, that will, will be used and that you will have configured in your Helm chart. And on, on the other side, you have the certificate client, the Redis client cert uh, itself, creating a server uh, secret loaded into the 
uh, deployments and those Spring Boots deployment. Um, now, to dig into why the certificate resource is interesting to you, I'd like you, I, I'd like to show a few things on the certificate resource itself. First, we have the secret name, the one, the secret that a uh, cert manager will create a private key and store it into, as well as storing the signed certificate in, signed certificate. And then we have the usages. Uh, that's also something you cannot do with the ingress annotations. Uh, so you will want to use a certificate instead for that. On the left side, you have the server oath usage for the server side. And then on the other side, you have the client oath. And finally, the small quirk I was talking about, sometimes your application will need a special encoding for the for the certificate. And by default, Cert Manager will store uh, the signed certificate as a PAM encoded uh, st string. And here, because it's a Java app, it needs PKCS12. And that's something you can do with Cert, uh, with Cert Manager, with the certificate resource, and something you cannot do with the ingress resource. So that's. That's, yeah, that's the certificate resource. And finally, let's look a bit at the secret that was created by Cert Manager. Uh, we have, again, uh, since I was talking about Java, we have the key store that P12 that resulted uh, because we set uh, in the previous slide, I, I, I was showing something about PKCS12. And most importantly, we have the chain of trust, the certificate chain or certificate the chain of cryptographic signatures. <laughs> I made it. Um, so TLS.TST, that's, that's the thing that is served by the clients and by the server when authenticating. And the CA.CRT, uh, the CA.CRT field that I didn't highlight here, which is a bit special because we can't, we uh, recommend not to use that for distributing trust. So don't you don't use the ca.crt CA and you'll see how to use this properly uh, in the next level. So to summarize, in level two, we learned that the certificate resource gives you more, cust uh, makes it uh, possible to customize your X509 certificates. And most, uh, so for example, in the case of Java for having uh, something compatible with your application and lets you do client certificates. And I'm now handing over to Ash to talk about trust. Thank you very much. So we've just seen two levels which tell us how we can configure what certificates we get, right? Um, you do something in your cluster, uh, be that an annotation or you write some YAML for a certificate, and you get a certificate that hopefully matches what you requested as close as possible. But what about if you need a bit more control over the issuance side of it? So we've given you examples with Let's Encrypt, right? That nothing wrong with Let's Encrypt at all. I love it. Uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. But it's not the right use, the, the, the right tool for every job. I'm not going to go into it, the detail of this slide because it's quite heavy and there's a lot of stuff here. But uh, in summary, we would call Let's Encrypt a public issuer, right? That's because you already trust it on all of your devices in this room, um, I would assume. Um, that's great. That means it's easy to set up because your clients will trust it already. Um, but it does mean that it comes with other burdens, if you like. So rate limits are the big one with Let's Encrypt. Um, it's also a little bit more complicated to issue because you need to prove that you own the domain before Let's Encrypt will give you a cert. Um, so what you can actually do is use private PKI, which is sometimes called self-signed certs, but certificate nerds don't like that because self-signed means a different thing there. Um, private certs, uh, private PKI gives you complete control over everything. Um, that means if you want to add some weird thing into your certificates, you totally can do that. Um, you can add whatever domain you like. So if you want to make, what, make a certificate, for example, .com or google.com or whatever, you can totally do that. Maybe you shouldn't, but you can. Um, <laughs> the, uh, 
there is obviously a trade-off with that, which is that private BKI is more that you have to do, right? You have to manage this CA certificate. You've got another one that you need to manage. And I would like to highlight that rotating those certificates is complicated and needs planning for. It's not as trivial as just um, rotating a certificate like cert manager would do for you in the background. Rotating a route is actually quite difficult. Um, so as a sort of summary of that, like we've seen how cert manager can provision for you this certificate chain that you need to do TLS stuff, like that, be that a server certificate or a client certificate or whatever. The question we're asking is, well, how do we trust the CA certificate that issued those? And uh, for your devices, as I've said before, you already trust them. It's provided by your operating system or whatever, but it's there. Um, in Kubernetes, we think the answer is Trust Manager. So Trust Manager is like Cert Manager, but for trust. We're not very inventive with names. So Trust Manager essentially takes the CA certificates that you need and makes it easy to use them in Kubernetes. The way it does that is through YAML, like everything else in Kubernetes. Um, we add a new resource, which is we call a bundle. It's actually cluster scoped. Um, and a bundle is a list of sources um, which could be secrets in your cluster, config maps, or that default trust bundle, the same one that's on your phone, probably. Um, it stitches those things together and then outputs it into a config map that you can use in your cluster. Um, or a secret now, as of version 0.7, which released recently. Um, the idea then is that you take that output and you mount it into your pod or whatever it is that you're running. Uh, you can then trust anything. So it makes it really easy to get started with private PKI. Um, I think it's really cool. I love playing with this stuff. A lot of organizations do this in production and it is incredibly powerful to have the ability to do whatever you like with these certificates. You can put a lot of useful stuff in there that you might not imagine. Um, it's not for everyone. I think from level three onwards, it's fair to say that we might be encountering stuff that not everyone will need, but it is good to have the option and we certainly provide those. I'm going to pass over again in a sec, but I'd like to say at level two, um, Mayal is here today talking, but Tim and I were preparing yesterday for him not to be here because he was in bed all day ill yesterday. So like shout out to My Mayal for actually being able to do this. Yeah. I will, I will let him bask in the glow of that while I pass over to Tim for level four. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right, so we talked about how to obtain a certificate using an annotated ingress and how that results in a certificate resource, but also how we can directly create certificate resources. And important to note here is that a certificate resource is kind of tightly coupled to a secret resource, where finally the result of the issuance will um, be placed so that that secret can be mounted somewhere. An alternative method that you can use to request certificates is a CSI mount, so basically a volume um, using the cert manager CSI drivers. So if you look at your um, pod YAML and the CSI volume that we configured in here, you see that what we actually do is we, we define this volume, we specify that we want to use the cert manager CSI mount, and we specify a set of volume attributes. Um, one of those volume attributes is the issuer, so that's like a reference to the issuer, like we have seen before. Um, additional, additionally, what we specify here is the DNS names that we want to see in the certificate. And once we create this, con this bot, the CSI driver will actually provision for us a certificate at the, specify the specified path that we mount this uh, volume in, and this certificate will have the specified DNS names. And it will be issued, of course, using this uh, issuer. So this is a great way to obtain certificates without using secret resources. So this way it's more secure. Um, it is also tightly coupled to the bot resource. So basically, um, when you have like five different bots, they will all have five different certificates. Um, also, the private key material does not leave the node, so it's kept in memory in the nodes, and then the memory is mounted as like a temporary volume in the container. So it's really a more secure solution. The private key material is not kept in the cluster state, but there's also kind of a disadvantage in case your 
your issuance or like issuing a certificate is pretty costly for you, this is probably not the method that you should use because um, this is like an ephemeral method. So every time your bot restarts or it is scheduled on another node, you'll have to issue a new certificate. Then another extension that we provide with Cert Manager is a approval policy. So if you look at the issuance flow of the certificate request resource, the first step in there is actually to make a approval decision on the certificate request. So we basically decide whether an, a, a created certificate request is approved or not. And we only proceed with the issuance when we see a certificate request that is approved. By default, Cert Manager actually comes with a approve all approver, which approves all the certificate requests um, for the, that target an issuer that is entry in Cert Manager. You can disable this default approver and you can replace it, for example, with the approval policy add-on that we created. And this add-on is actually a more advanced um, policy system where you can specify using the certificate request policies, what certificate requests are allowed and what certificate requests are denied. So in this example, we actually say that all certificate requests have to have a common name with the value example.com, have to have DNS names that match the specified values. And then we also specify the selector, which basically selects what certificate request this policy applies to. So there is still a bit of work here that we are doing. So we are adding support for CL. We are trying to make this much more intuitive because I think we can agree that the, the UI currently isn't super great. Um, but generally the idea of this approval system is that you let your application teams create certificate requests freely and then you specify through a policy what certificate requests can actually be allowed and what certificate requests are denied. Okay, let's move on to the level five. It's the, I guess, the most difficult level, <laughs> but that's not the way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> level five is how to extend Cert Manager. Cert, uh, there's, because we're using Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes API makes it very, very easy to extend to extend uh, things. The first extend po extension point we have is the issuer. And if you are a company that provides certificates to you, 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 your users, sign certificate requests, then you will probably have thought about creating your own issuer for that measure. And by the way, we have created a new library called issuer lib to help you in the process of creating an issuer because historically it was very hard to build one because you needed to know everything about Kubernetes controllers and uh, the cert certificate request lifecycle and all that. And this is all simplified, hopefully with this library. The second extension point is the DNS01 solver extension. If you are again a, a, a DNS provider and you want your users to be able to uh, solve DNS01 challenges through Cert Manager via your DNS, DN, uh, via your DNS, you will want to look at this webhook example and uh, to provide your user, yeah, to, to do that. <laughs> and finally, the two last extension points is. We talked about the approval, approver policy project previously, but you, go, you can go way beyond that. You can build your own, uh, you, your own approval workflow. You could even approve your certificate request from your phone if you want it. It is totally first class. Uh, it is, but in that case, you will need to look at the approval policy code base because we don't have any other example of such. Uh, an approver. And finally, the CSI driver is also a place where it, uh, things can be extended. There, there's the CSI lib that allows you to build your own CSI driver. Uh, 
there is one example of such a specialized CSI driver, that's the CSI driver SPIFI, that issues specifically SPIFI identities instead of any type of certificate. So that's, that's it for the extensions and level five, and I'll hand over to, to Ash. So let's, uh, let's finish this off. I'm very aware that we've just uh, dumped quite a lot of information in that talk. It is very information dense, a lot of different projects we've mentioned. Um, fortunately, you don't have to remember it all. This is being recorded anyway, but like, aside from that, anything that we've just talked about should be documented on our website, cert-manager.io. So I would like to highlight that before I go any further. Another thing I'd like to say is we're going to have time for questions, so now is the time to start thinking of them while I wrap it up. Um, we'd really love if you could come along to our cert manager booth if you have not already. I recognize a lot of faces in the crowd that have actually already been, but you can come again. Um, this is a picture of our booth in Detroit last year, but uh, our one today is actually in a much better location. It's really nice. Uh, it's really great to have people coming along and talking to us. And the fun thing here, which you can actually just see in the picture, is uh, we're actually printing real live certificates, X509 certificates that you can take home as a souvenir. Um, come get yours. Um, they're valid for 30 years, so, you know, it should be good. Um, we even have an actual wax stamp of the cert manager logo that you'll get on it. So please do come along and get yours. Um, it's a lot of fun. We'll be here until the end of the conference. So, you know, come get that. And ask questions about cert manager and, you know, talk about stuff. That's cool too. But um, a lot of people come for the certificates and that's okay. Um, the other thing I would say, and I've said this to a lot of the people who've come to the booth, is we have meetings. Um, if you're based in North America, our daily stand-ups are going to be while you're asleep, or at least I hope you'll be asleep, because it'll be really early for you. Um, but every couple of weeks, we have a North America-friendly meeting where um, people can come along, ask questions. The agenda's open, so you can add in your thing and come talk about it. Uh, it's a really good way to sort of move things forward if you've raised a PR or if you've got questions, or you can get started in contributing. We've done a lot of work as part of the graduating stuff um, in defining different levels of how you can get involved. So. We've probably got a, a maintainership level for you if you want to get involved in the project or get involved with open source. And Slack is always available. We have a, a channel on Kubernetes Slack. You can always come and drop in there. Uh, KubeCon asked me to add this QR code for feedback. We'd love to have your feedback. Um, we'd also love if you could uh, stop by our colleague, Satya, if you're here in person. Um, he's back there in the corner. He's uh, doing a survey on Kubernetes, and he'd love to talk to you as well. Uh, with all that said, um, we have seven minutes for questions, so if anyone has anything burning, please do feel free to come to the mic and ask us. Now's a great time to do it and have it immortalized forever. Oh, we've got our first contestant. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. Trying to get here quick. Sorry. Um, so it meant you had the slide on adding a new issuer. What issuers come out of the box? Uh, and how does the issuer side of this work? It's, it's, it's interacting with a, with, a, with a root CA outside of Kubernetes, correct? Yes, exactly that, yes. So the issuers that come out of the box are Acme, um, Venify, HashiCorp Vault, and a built-in issuer that will sort of do private PKI inside your cluster. Um, there's tons of external issuers, too many for me to list here, that have already been made. Um, the idea is that it is basically a wrapper around any API which can sign certificate signing requests. So we take the encoded request, send it off to the API, get back something. Usually that works pretty well as it happens. Um, there are th the big ones are like uh, AWS Private CA. They're, they're, they have an API for this. It's just a wrapper around that. And so a manager does the sort of plumbing in the middle to make sure it all works. Thank you. Thanks very much. Question for that trust manager. Um, how do you guys handle the idiosyncrasies between the trust stores for different distros when you're actually mounting them into the, the pods? Is that just up to the user to deal with that, or uh, do you guys have a solution there? I passed over the mic on a trust manager question. I shouldn't have done that. Um, so we, we don't. <laughs> um, we just create a config map, and you mount that wherever you like. Um, we'd be super interested in solving that problem, but it's incredibly hard to do. Yeah. Um, I believe that there's work going on upstream. There's a new cluster trust bundle resource that will be coming out, and Trust Manager will support that, so we'll write that new resource. 
I believe Kubernetes are going to take a stab at this. Okay. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of just, as an open source project with limited resources, we've kind of said like, writing the, the config map is enough and then you'll have to work out the rest of it because we, to, to answer that question generally and solve the problem generally, it's just too hard for us at the moment. Um, gotcha, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. Hello, good afternoon. I've been using your product for nearly three years, so thanks. Um, I wonder, um, I've been using with the certificate. I saw the CSI over there in the presentation. Um, where is the secret actually going? Because like you said, you're not gonna have the secret anymore, right? So we're, that's the first question. The second question will be, do you guys have any idea or any plans to have some sort of like integration with Azure Key Vault? So we could push, for example, a certificate to Azure Key Vault. Thanks. So let's maybe start with the first question. Um, basically with a, the CSI driver, so CSI lib is the library used to create the Kubernetes, uh, the cert manager CSI driver and the cert manager CSI driver spiffy. Um, so what you as an end user will use probably is CSI driver, so cert manager CSI driver. That's why you search in uh, GitHub. Um, basically the idea here is that there is no secret resource. So what actually happens is the CSI driver locally generates a private key. Um, it signs the CSR with that and then that uh, CSR is put in the certificate request resource. That's like all the way on the right. And that certificate request resource is um, picked up by the issuer. So the issuer integration can be like Volts, Vanify, Acme, whatever. Um, and then a signed certificate is created based on that. Mm -hmm. So the signed certificate is then put in the status of the certificate request resource. The CSI driver see sees that and it takes that signed certificate and it places um, the signed certificate next to the private key material that it generated locally. And so now the CSI driver has this information and it mounts these things in the volume that it's, um, that basically the volume is mounted that in, in the container in the pot. Gotcha. Thanks. Um, could you repeat maybe your second question again? If, key, if you guys have any plans to do any uh, Azure Key Vault integration, for example. Um, not sure if there's any answer for that. I think no <laughs> is the quick answer. <laughs> uh, All right. We do hear a lot of requests for that sort of thing. Um, it's kind of hard to do with the current architecture of Cert Manager. Um, love to chat about it more. Um, like, it's, it's maybe a, a booth question if you could make it along yeah, or, sure. or one of the meetings. Like, it, it's an interesting problem space and there's a lot to explore there. Thank you. Great. Uh, Anyone else got any questions? Now is your chance. Okay. Some people looked away awkwardly so that they didn't, I didn't make eye contact and make them ask a question. So all is left then is for me to say, um, well, first feedback, please. Um, and finally, thank you all for coming. Um, it's been great. Thanks so much.